Um, good morning, nearly good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jim Faley. I'm one of the upstream maintainers for the Zen drivers in a Libvirt project and kind of wanted to give you a status of uh, that work. <clears throat> so why Libvirt? I've uh, got a collection of Zen developers here in the room. Why should you be interested in Libvirt? Um, and I'd say the answer to that is the tools. There are lots of tools based on libvirt. Um, vert manager, vert viewer, installers, monitoring stuff like Nagios and Collecti, uh, infrastructure as a service um, projects like Eucalyptus and OpenStack. <clears throat> so having some proper support and libvirt for your hypervisor um, really you know, opens you up to the greater open source virtualization ecosystem. Uh, and beyond that, there's just the usual benefits that kind of come with using Libvirt. It has a stable, backwards compatible API for managing pretty much everything on the host related to virtualization. It has a stable, backwards compatible configuration format that's uh, described in XML. All of Libvirt's managed entities are um, described in this format, uh, which makes it quite extensible um, and results in simple APIs. I mean, the device add API in Libvirt was added in 2007 and has not changed one bit since then. It certainly has gained support for a tremendous number of devices that can be added, but that function has not changed. Um, <clears throat> It also insulates users from changes in underlying components that it abstracts. Things like LVM or bridge control tools or open vSwitch or hypervisor tool stacks, for example. Um, and that was the case with Zen, right? Switching from ZenD to LibXL, um, <clears throat> users should just not know the difference when you're at the libvirt level. It provides some secure migration, actually a few nice migration features. Secure migration, one of them over SSH tunnel, over TLS. Uh, it has an evolving migration protocol that's currently at a version three that has all sorts of stages from preparing the migration to confirming that it's complete. Uh, and, and all sorts of things in between that allow a little more robust error detection and rollback in, in the event that something happens during the migration. I mentioned already it kind of integrates with other subsystems um, involved in virtualization, and <clears throat> it's worth mentioning again. I mean, essentially provides you a one-stop shop for managing a host. Um, you know, you can have one port open, have your host locked down, so um, really kind of reduces your attack surface on the host. And maybe not as interesting to this audience, but it supports quite a few hypervisors. Uh, so with this hypervisor support and stable API and stable uh, config format, it's, re it's really a good choice for developing virtualization management tools. So this is just a little basic diagram of the architecture at Libvirt. I always like to point out it has a stateful and stateless modes. <clears throat> the stateless mode Libvirt D is not needed, the daemon's not needed. Uh, all state is kind of maintained in the, in the individual components. But most objects managed by libvirt, we do need to maintain some state about those. And hence libvirt D and all of the stateful drivers that are shown over on the left there. Um, notice there's two drivers for Zen. <laughs> the old Zen driver, uh, Zen D driver, or I like to call it now the legacy Zen driver, and a live Excel driver. The Zen D driver is actually kind of an unusual one in that <clears throat> It's stateful, it's part of libvirt D, but really maintains no state. All the states maintain within ZenD itself. So support, libvirt supports all these drivers uh, to manage various pieces of the system. And the one that is interesting to this audience, I think of course, is a hypervisor driver. Um, it's access via a hypervisor name plus protocol URI, given a few examples of remote and local ones here. Uh, the interesting thing about the hypervisor driver is the um, 
for driver structure itself, which lives in source driver.h and libvirt sources. It currently has 202 functions, uh, maybe another one or two <laughs> since Friday. Um, and the QMU driver implements a lion's share of those, uh, 192 of them. The, both Zen drivers actually implement 91, um, which, you know, compared to six months ago, is pretty good. The LibXL one was quite a bit lower. So the positive news there is we've reached parity with the old Zen driver. So from a liver perspective, managing Zen is no different on LibXL now than it was with the old tool stack. And, you know, don't fare too bad as comparison to some of the other hypervisors that Libver supports. And actually extending, um, you know, adding functions to the hypervisors are, is pretty easy. The code structure in Libver is laid out to where under the source directory you have a hypervisor directory. It's the name of the hypervisor, so there's QMU, Zen, LibXL, LXC, and so on. And then that name underscore driver.c. You would just go in there, plop, you know, your... Um, new function that you're implementing in the description of the ver verb driver func um, variable and provide an implementation and send off a patch. Um, there's plenty of existing functions to use as a template and the QMU driver most likely is going to have whatever you want to implement already implemented so you can use it um, as a, you know, some boilerplate code as well, or just give you some ideas of, you know, approaches for implementing the function. So, I'm trying to move fast here so everyone can get to lunch on time. Um, <clears throat> so this legacy Zen driver uh, has quite a history in libvirt. It was the first driver supported by libvirt. Um, I like to call it an Uber driver because it really uses several interfaces of Zen to provide its implementation. It uses ZenD primarily. Almost everything is done through ZenD, but some Zen stores, some hypercalls, and in a few rare cases, XM. Uh, but like I said, it primarily uses ZenD. And this driver actually used to be fall into the stateless category um, a couple of years ago, before libvirt 1.0.5. There was a bunch of code reorganization and refactoring done. Uh, and, and that release, and we moved this thing in to be a stateful driver. It just made more sense, even though the thing really still no longer, I mean, it, it doesn't maintain any, any state itself. It has to go to ZenD for all of this. And that's worth repeating. And, and I'll get to why that is here in a few slides. But in this old driver, all state is maintained in ZenD. So the new driver, one based on LabXL. I started working on this uh, at one of, or during one of SUSE's hack weeks back in 2011. And after that hack week, spent another month or so working on the thing and, and finally got it into libvirt 0.0.9.0 in um, July, no, April 2011. Initially, the thing supported just a live Excel in Zen 4.1. Uh, this, this actually is before Zen 4.2 is released. Um, <clears throat> but after 4.2 come out and we saw all of the changes, and I'm sure many in the room here are familiar with them, that occurred in live Excel between 4.1 and 4.2, uh, we kind of decided, you know, let's, let's not support, let's drop the 4.1 support in libvirt and just go with 4.2 and onward. Um, LibXL was actually tagged as tech preview in Zen 4.1, and the old Zendy tool stack was still the primary tool stack. So, you know, we thought it was a good idea to just really not mess with Zen 4.1 support in a LibXL driver, having all this compat code and stuff in there for a thing that really wasn't even prime time. Um, and one of the primary goals of this driver was to just make everything transparent to the user. So after a user upgraded his ND stack to LibXL, I mean, just shouldn't know the difference. Everything from how the thing is accessed, you use this same Zen plus protocol URI to all of your existing domain configuration. It should just work. And if it doesn't, uh, I'd consider it a bug and would like to know about it. Uh, this driver will not load if 
the legacy drivers loaded. That's an important point and really probably the most frequently asked question I get with respect to Libvirt and Zen. People are trying to use, particularly with Zen 4.2 through 4.4, you have a potential to have both of these things installed. And so people will have a Zen D running, they expect Libvirt to be using this new LibXL driver, and no, that's not the case. If Zen D is running, the old driver will load and not the new one. Um, like QMU and LXC and most of Libvirt's drivers, the LibXL driver is a stateful driver. All state is maintained in Libvirt. And again, repeat, in this new driver, all state is maintained in Libvirt. And one other thing that um, I kind of added to the slide last night as I was thinking about this talk was don't mix and match LibXL apps, I've discovered, right? So particularly when you're just managing one host. Because LibXL being stateless, all the state is pushed up into the app. And so if app A is, you know, creating and managing some virtual machines and LibXL app B comes in and fiddles with that, app A is not going to know about this, right? You're just bad idea from my experience to mix and match these things. Stick with one of them. So I was kind of beating the drum about this. <clears throat> state is maintained in the old driver in Zendi. State is maintained in the new one in Libvirt because when you come to upgrading your stacks, this makes a difference. It becomes obvious why I'm beating the drum. So in the old stack, Zendi, if you had a bunch of uh, virtual machines defined, right? All of this information is stored in ZenD. So if you just go and you know swap your stacks and restart libvirt, all of your machines are gone. If you're looking at this through something like Vert Manager, it seems all of your VMs have just disappeared. <clears throat> and again, the reason for that is because state was maintained by ZenD, which is now gone. So some approaches to upgrading from Zendi to LibXL would be, you know, first get all of your config, get it exported into libvirt domain XML, then do the upgrade, and then import all of that stuff into libvirt. Uh, you know, if you've already moved to the stack, you can just take your config. Libvirt has this nice, cool feature of taking a native config and turning it into XML or the other way around. But you could take all your native configuration, XM or S expression or whatever it be, uh, pump it through, get DOM XML out, and then define your virtual machines from that. So <clears throat> some improvements that are either in the works or certainly would like to be working on soon is uh, support for Excel configuration format. Um, I actually have a Google Summer of Code student that along with you know, some other tasks he's been doing, uh, he's done this work. And it's close to being merged, maybe later this week have that committed. Um, one other thing that I've started work on a while ago, I have a branch in my tree that's a little bit stale, is uh, lock manager integration with the LibXL driver. Um, Libvirt's lock manager is a pretty cool service that provides resource protection <clears throat> for, for you know, arbitrary resources, uh, primarily disk images. So, um, you know, would like to have the LibXL driver integrated with that service. Uh, folks ask for it a lot. It, it, it's a pretty cool service. You know, it keeps you from doing things like starting, you know, two VMs that are, have right access to the same disk, this type of stuff. Um, snapshots, there, an ex-colleague actually had kind of started looking at this in the context of LibXL, <clears throat> really wasn't making much progress with it, um, but uh, Chun Yan actually has agreed to kind of start looking at that and hopefully, you know, we can get things moving along on the LibXL side there. Um, the Google Summer of Code student that I have this summer, he actually has put together some skeletal code in libvirt LibXL driver to consume these theoretical snapshot APIs from LibXL. So we actually even have a little bit of code in libvirt for this feature. Um, Spice is one that I'd like to get um, 
integrated in the LibXL driver. I mean, LibXL has it, the QMU driver has it, but the LibXL driver doesn't. Um, nor does the Zend driver, actually. There was no SPIA support uh, in the Zend days, so that driver doesn't have it either. Unit test, we really need some unit tests for this driver. Um, <clears throat> Daniel Barange, who's a Red Hat Libvirt hacker, actually was at the Zen Summit in May, and some outcome of that was some tests that he wrote that do some round trip checking of uh, config. So Libvirt domain XML down to LibXL domain config and back. Um, most of that has been committed, but the tests themselves haven't. There are some issues there that need to be resolved before I can get that committed. And, and actually, as I stand here talking about that, maybe this thing should be moved up the list uh, because we, we really need this. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, what you find important. I mean, hopefully some folks here in the room are thinking, huh, what, what could I do? What features have I worked on in Zen that would be nice to expose to, um, you know, these higher layer tools? Um, yeah, and with that, <laughs> some help would be much appreciated. Um, so I mentioned in the beginning, I'm the libvirt upstream maintainer for the Zen drivers, singular. There's no other maintainer. And, you know, it's a fair bit of code, fair bit of work to, you know, maintain one of these hypervisor drivers when it's sort of a part-time job. My primary job at SUSE is product, and so uh, that often doesn't afford me a lot of time to work in various upstream communities. So, uh, essentially, I'm a single point of failure in that community, or, you know, maybe better said, a single point of delay. I mean, patches, and contributions will often sit there for days or weeks without anyone looking at them until, you know, I have some cycles to be able to get to those. And my own patches actually is really problematic because there is no one to review it. I can't review and act my own stuff. So I have to wait for, you know, someone, some other maintainers who are not focused on Zen drivers to have a little bit of time to have something to say about my code before we can even commit stuff. So. You know, having one maintainer there is pretty painful at times. Um, <clears throat> you've seen that big gap between the QMU driver and the Zen drivers as far as the number of functions in the hypervisor driver table that are implemented. Um, there's a fair bit of those that could be implemented today, but many of them need some underlying support in LibXL. Uh, things like Snapshot. I mean, Libvirt has 16 Snapshot APIs. Um, and, you know, not much can be done with those until we have support in LiveXL. Uh, there's some really cool block operations, block rebase, block resize, block pool, and so on. Um, those would be really cool, but again, no support in LiveXL. Um, Libvirt has APIs for interacting with guest agents. Um, and as far as I know, no support for that in LibXL. So, you know, we need some more APIs in LibXL to even be able to implement some of these features in the libvirt LibXL driver to kind of shrink that gap with the other hypervisor. And, um, yeah, with that, I mean, if you do work on some new feature in, a, in LibXL, please, 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 think about stepping up into libvirt and providing an implementation there. I mean, you just wrote the code, you're familiar with it. Um, you know, take a few minutes to at least take a look at how this might plug into libvirt. And I'd certainly be able, or more than willing to help out in any way I can to, you know, get your work committed upstream. And, um, you know, the community there is quite helpful as well. Even if they're not focused on Zen, they're still, you know, a helpful group of people that, um, like I said, we'll do all we can to try to get your contributions committed. Um, yeah, and that's all I have, so <laughs> try to wrap it up quick and we can be out of here on time. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If not, we'll see. <laughs> So what, were, what was your question about it? How does it tie in? Like all these things that we learned, is there any other pieces that are needed to have open stack? No, no. So 
OpenStack, upstream, you know, it really depends on the base you're on. So whatever you lay OpenStack on top of, you know, what, what Zen or, and what components are there. Um, most of the distros and products that come out of OpenStack sitting on top of distros are still on a Zen D stack. But I have, you know, ensured that all of the OpenStack features that I've cared about work with LibXL as well. There's a bit to be changed in there, and the config file, there's some, what is this? And, you know, the default is KVM. Uh, but you can put Zen in there, or UML, or, you know, what LXC, the other things that OpenStack supports. But yeah, there's a config operation for that. Um, but then beyond that, there's no distinction between Zen D versus LibXL or whatever. It's just Zen. Which is one reason why the stuff just works under the LibXL stack. OpenStack uses the libvirt driver to talk to Zen, not Zen server, but Zen, open source Zen and KVM and UML and containers. And I think that's the only ones that's supported by the libvirt OpenStack driver. But um, <clears throat> yeah, once you've you know, told it which hypervisor to use, then it's, it's just libvirt from there. KVM versus QMU is the same. Zen D versus LibXL. I mean, it just doesn't know anything about this. George? I was just pointing out that um, Libvirt doesn't abstract away the, uh, the hypervisor or the details of the hypervisor underneath. So typically, it's a common way of connecting both the KVM or the QMU or Zen. But typically, if you have an application that's written with Libvirt for KVM, you can't just take it and plug in Libvirt for Zen because it, it exposes the Yeah, that's. Right. Right. Often in, in VM config anyway, drivers will just ignore something it doesn't know, right? So if you had some Vert IO stuff in, in you know, a configuration for a Zen virtual machine, by the time it gets to the LibXL drivers, ah, I don't know what that is. And in some cases, maybe that's not such a good idea. I mean, there have been times where I've went in and said, you know, uh, if a user wants this piece of thing, I really should fail if it's not available, right? Otherwise, they're gonna get something that's not what they were expecting. Yeah, OpenStack actually, one of the, <laughs> and I think 
you did most of the work there, Don, is, um, you know, we want to be able to specify a certain CPU and certain features and so on so that you can migrate this instance around the, the cloud easily. And yeah, we're, we're kind of needing some TLC on the Zen side there. <laughs> Even in LibXL, right? I'm not sure how much control, I haven't looked at that actually, but how much control it gives me and you know what, what it allows me to do on the libvirt side there. Guess that's it, we're ready for food. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot.